So in today's video, we are going to fix the animation for our face. When it slides across the floor, we wanted to play an animation that so that it makes it look like it's kind of scraping along the floor and that it's like letting off like sparks through the back. We did this in, I think, one of the previous episodes, but it wasn't working as we wanted to. In fact, let's go and see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. So when we go and jump, it suddenly disappears, which is not really what we want. We want it to kind of look like it's just fading out and that the existing sparks that are in this in the scene will eventually like move off the screen so go and try and implement that in today's episode and then we also want to try and work on some of the obstacles so i'm going to bring in a square that we're going to use as an obstacle it's not really going to be an obstacle it's going to be a platform rather and then once we've done that we'll add a collide onto that and once we've done that we will go and start working on an obstacle so for example one of the triangles that if you do hit it you have to start the level from the beginning so let's go and work on that so the first things first let's go and play around with our particle system so now we need to do a few things here so we want to change the particle system the shape as well as the amount of emission that it uh, emits over rate right over time so we're just going to play around with this and see what it's, what it's going to look like. So we want it to emit a lot more than what it is. So let's go and increase this to about, let's let's start with about, let's, let's run it up to about 50. So I'm just going to type 50 over here. And then we want to change the shape of it because we don't want it this big. We only really want it to be like run about over here. It doesn't need to go that far because you can't really see it it's unnecessary so let's go and do this so let's change the shape to a sphere so that it looks a lot smaller and then what else do we want to do we want to change the radius thickness to zero not that that makes a difference we'll change the arc to about 20 then we want to let's see what this looks like in our game so if we play this we should see that it kind of looks like it's that, yeah, that looks much better. So you can see that it kind of looks like it's shooting out from the back. And then when we jump, it just disappears straight away. So let's go and try and fix that. Okay, so now we've got the particle system emitting correctly. Well, what we, we'll probably leave it like that for now, but uh, we might come back to it later on. So let's go to... Let's go to the code here. And instead of just going and um, setting this to be false, setting the game object to be false and getting rid of it at the time of jumping, we want to go and stop it. So let's see if we, what do we do here? We need to go and say product system dot, what are we doing? Okay, so if it's grounded, then we want to go and say play. And then if it's not grounded, we want to say stop. So that should stop it. Now I believe that shouldn't turn it off straight away. I think it will just stop the, stop it from emitting while it's in the air, but I think the previous ones should still be in the scene. So let's try and see what this looks like. So you can see that it's, it's a lot better. So once we jump, you can see it stops, but we've still got the the ones that are there. So that's that's what we wanted. Now let's just see if we can change the lifetime so start lifetime is going to be five let's try and make it about one and see what that looks like so let's play it okay so let's see start delay can we change the lifetime of it render it maybe maybe let's close all of these and see particle system shape Velocity over lifetime, limit velocity over lifetime, lifetime by meter speed, force of over lifetime, color over lifetime, color over speed, color by speed, size over lifetime, size by speed. Okay, so let's let's try and change color over lifetime. So let's see, can we if we make this one. Can we make this one transparent? Let's see. Let's change the alpha so that it kind of fades out. And hopefully that makes it look like it fades out a lot faster than what it does. Okay, so 
I guess, yeah, that's, that's, that looks better. So we'll keep it like that. Now, the only thing we need to go and do in this episode is try and work on some obstacles and the platform. So I have worked on, what is it, a just a random QPI. Now, this is, this is not the way we're going to do it in the, like, for the overall finished game. We're just going to, I swear I moved this, this side. So in today's episode, we are just going to work on adding an obstacle in here and kind of building out what we would use as a like kind of like a, a f test scene so later on once i figured out how to get this tile sheet to work we will use these tiles and then we can build out a proper level using that but for now let's go and get some obstacles this shouldn't really be in an obstacle file because it's not really an obstacle so this is going to be our square and this is actually going to be a platform that we can stand on so let's go and name it platform and then we need to add a box collider onto this it's going to be a 2d box collider and let's just go and edit that so okay so we don't need to edit that because that is the perfect size now we need to go and move it around so this i'm going to push over here somewhere now I don't think it's not going to be able to move, so we might need to freeze it. So let's just see what happens when we go into it. Okay, so that's fine. That doesn't work. Now, on our platform, I am going to... Info. Okay, so we don't need to constraint it because it doesn't have a ridge body on it. If it did have a ridge body, then I guess we'd have to freeze it in the right position. So that's fine. Now, let's just go and move this right down here so this is not the best way like i said to do it but we will figure that out in one of the other episodes once i figured out how to use that sprite sheet or import it correctly we will go and do that so let's see can we jump on top of this now let's just zoom out here so let's play this if we jump on here okay so we can jump straight over that so let's go and test that. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to duplicate. Let's just make a little bit of a, a scene that we can play with around with here. So let's copy and paste that. And I'm going to move it here somewhere right in the middle. So that we jump onto there and then hopefully jump onto the next one. Actually, I'm going to put another one on. Uh, probably somewhere around here. Something like that doesn't have to be exact but this is going to be let's just put this at 4.5 and i'll put this one at 4.5 so that it's right on top of each other let's just give this a test because now that we have a few things that we can jump onto and over we will be able to see if we need to change the jump of the player and the jump force so that we can see if we can jump onto it. Okay, so you can see that that doesn't work. Now, if that happens, we need to register that we failed and that we need to go and restart the game. So let's let's test this out. So we jump on there. Okay, so that's fine. Now, the problem is because these are not the ground, we can't jump on them. So we need to select them and add a tag onto it. Or actually, we can add a layer, I think it is. And this layer is going to be a platform we'll just keep it as platform for now so let's test this out so on these layers let's go and add those that platform onto it now if we go to our player player ob object we should be able to check our platform layer mask so that now if we collide with our player and our player if we collide with the ground and the platforms this should allow us to jump automatically so that we can jump from this platform if I can ev ever get onto that platform. So we can jump onto this platform and then still jump across like that. Okay, so that's working nicely. Now let's see, that one's fine, that one's fine, and that one's fine. Okay, so that's fine. Now let's go and start working on a triangle. So I'm just going to... Is there a way to convert this into a triangle? I guess not. So let's let's just make a triangle here quickly. This is going to be 100 by 100. And I'm just going to 
copy shape attributes and try and paste it onto there. Does that work? Yeah, that, that's fine. Uh, we might have to make it a little bit smaller so that it fits in here, like that. And I'm just going to disable that. And then that should be fine. And let's go and export that. And then this is just going to be a triangle. So now that we have a triangle in here, this is going to be an obstacle. So where we art obstacles, here it is. So these, let's go into our scene view. So these triangles here are going to make you, if you collide with them, we'll put one over here just because that makes more sense. But I want to put them on the same y value. So this is going to be minus 3.5, minus 3.5. Five. This one and this one. Actually, let's just put them. Let's yeah, this one and this one. Nope, that one and that one. This is going to be minus three point five. Okay, so that's fine. And then let's just put this over there. Okay, so this of uh, this triangle also needs to have a collider on it. So this is going to be a polygon collider, so that it shapes it like a triangle for us which is good. Now, we can go and edit this and just make it a little bit more accurate, but it doesn't really need to be done. So that's, I mean, let's just do it. Okay, so that, that looks good. Now, that's fine. Now this layer, we can add a obstacle layer onto it. Let's go and say ob obstacle. Do we want to do that or? Actually, we won't do that. We will, yeah, we'll get rid of that for now. And then we will, oh, actually, uh, you know what? Yeah, we'll leave that in for the next episode. But today, we, where am I? We are going to, you know what? Let's just do it. So we'll put that ob obstacle tag on there or layer mask. And then in our script here, we can go and say, which one do we need to do this? So where do we do uh, jump? This is where we jump. Okay, so we need to, we might just have to add a different script onto this triangle so that when we collide with this triangle, we go and reset the game. Actually, you know what, let's do this. Let's do it in the player class because we want to leave this, this game is fairly, it should fairly be simple. So we don't really need to introduce multiple classes. It's probably not the best way to do it, but let's go and say private. Yeah, so let's go, actually, let's bring in our on collision. On collision, enter 2D. That's the one. So on collision, enter 2D. So now let's go and say if the. Actually, that's not going to work because that's going to use our collider to figure out which tag we're using but we don't actually have a tag on it so let's go and do it the same way we did for our jumping so this is grounded checks to see so let's go and say we'll copy that and we will paste it in here and say that's not a copy so let's go and copy that and paste it in here and now instead of saying is grounded we can go and create another boolean and this is going to be bool is let's just say is dead for now is dead equals layer mask. Okay. Actually, no, that's not going to work. Because now it's going to check for the multiple. Actually, we can probably do this. I don't know if you can copy this and say, let's say dead layer mask. And we'll copy that. And then we can paste this in here. And that way, if we... collide with this we should be able to figure out if we can carry on with the game or not so on our player we can in here go and say dead layer mask is only going to be an obstacle so anything you collide with that's an uh, has the obstacle uh, layer attached to it we should not be able to carry on so let's go and say if the player is dead then let's just go and print What are we going to print? We're going to say player, get, or let's just say game, 
restarted. We'll save that and then let's give that a test. So I doubt this is going to work because I think I've mixed it up. I don't think we're really supposed to use layer masks in a collision on collision enter. So let's let's give this a test. You never know, it might work. It probably will work, but probably just not the best way. So if we collide with that one, where is our where is our triangle? Did we do that? Uh, we've added the obstacle tag onto it. Now our player and the part no what is it? Player player script Obstacle. Okay, so that's clearly not going to work. So let's let's just go and do it with our tag. So let's get rid of this and say, we'll do the exact same thing, but with a tag. So you can get rid of all of that and just say, if the other dot game object dot compare tag is going to be equal to a obstacle, then we can go and do this. So let's go save that. And then we need to go and put this tag on to our obstacle. So where's our triangle? So here's our triangle. Let's go and create a new tag. And then this one, this one is going to be called. Let me just copy that so that I know that it is exactly the same. We'll copy that. And then actually I did copy it. It's just because the program I'm using has a different copy and paste shortcut. So that's fine. Now on our triangle, let's go and put that on as our tag. And then hopefully now we should see that that should work. So we should get a message being printed out as soon as we uh, collide with that. So that's fine. Okay, so that's good. Now we need to go to our player. And on our player, I'm just going to freeze our rotation. So where is our ridge body? Here's our ridge body. Constraints, let's go and freeze rotation on the z-axis because we don't really want to see that just yet. Later on when we jump, hopefully we'll add a nice uh, animation to our game so that whenever we jump, we actually see the cube rotate a few degrees, not a few degrees, probably every time you jump, I think it's going to rotate twice so that it looks like it is landing straight back on to it's in its upright position. But yeah, that's, a, that's a, another episode in the future. So that's going to be it for today's episode. So thanks for watching. If you made this far, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next episode where we will hopefully have figured out how to use a sprite sheet. So thanks for watching and goodbye.